Looking to enhance the appeal and performance of your gym with state-of-the-art equipment? Look no further than the Gym Administrator. Founded by Sal Corrente, professional wrestling manager, promoter, and author of the great book Bruno San Martino, the autobiography of wrestling's living legend, available on Amazon.com, the Gym Administrator will spot you on that final rep and assist you every step of the way from purchase through installation. Whether it be strength training, cardiovascular training, or performance enhancement, the Gym Administrator works with a wide array of leading vendors and suppliers carefully selected to meet the diverse needs of your clientele. Service the way you remember it. Contact us at 914-494-1066 or visit our website at thegymadministrator.com as well as all social media platforms. The Gym Administrator. All your fitness needs under one roof. Scan the barcode at the bottom of the screen to get started today. Welcome back to Long Island's number one pro wrestler and broadcast. Monty Farrow, only seen here out of Tin Mirror Studios from Kings Park, Long Island, where we have the star of the show, Mr. Jimmy Farrow from Florida. Jimmy, how are you? Lovely. What's going on? Uh, just another day in the neighborhood. And we've got yeah. our special guest, the incredible Hollywood. Hollywood, you're in California and Tennessee now. I forget where you're living nowadays. You're, you're really good. Today is Tennessee. <laughs> I have, I yeah, you knew it was one or the other and you're out of your own stu we were talking before the show i said where are you in the studio she goes yeah my house that's pretty kick-ass man i love it look at that i know thank you well because my other half ryan has to do all his music and all his podcasts so we decided we better do something here make it a little bit more instead of having the back of the desk you know what I mean? Yeah. A, whatever. In the dining room, you know, in your office. So we, we made our studio. You know, you know it's so fun. It's okay. It's, I, I, th it's good. I think we're, yeah. we're close to the same age. Isn't it weird how, like, things have changed now? Like, you have all this podcast and just this whole environment, how how it's changed. It's, it's pretty amazing, isn't it? It, it is amazing for sure, uh, making music that way as well. Um, the only thing that I miss is because when you got interviewed back in the day, you were on TV right. and it was just like, oh my God, the power of television. There's, there's nothing like it unless the podcast has millions of people, but thank goodness that we have what we have because it gets to certain people, you know, the people that we needed to get to. So... This is good because we can be remote. We can be anywhere. I can be in Australia right now, and you would never know. And you never I just, know. Yeah. I'll just move this out of the way. <laughs> <laughs> so last time when we saw you in New York, you were in studio with myself, but Jimmy was, I think he was on a vacation. I forget where he was right. at the time. Right. So let me formally introduce yourself, yourselves, the great Hollywood, Mr. Jimmy Farrow. May I introduce yourselves to each other? How are Hi, you? Hi, Jimmy. Hello there. How you doing? Nice um, studio. Very, very nice, you know. We could be shooting from anywhere. You're right about that. I was thinking about shooting from the bathroom over here in uh, White Castle, but I don't know if that look would have been right. You the know, for the might be really good in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would have to make some really sweet music, not to use a music reference, but uh, yeah. Oy. Good there to you see go. you. Good yes, to see you. Good to see you. Where are you right now? 
I'm in PCB, Panama City Beach, Florida. Okay, Mike, are, you you getting, wanna... are you getting pounded with the rain? No, it's very strange here. It, it will monsoon and then nothing for what seems like weeks, and then it will monsoon. We've had tornadoes. Okay. Uh, I, I heard about a hurricane that came through here about six years ago that changed everybody forever, it seems. So apparently I'm in some sort of trap because I live on the Gulf of Mexico, so I guess you got to deal with it. But, I um and there's bugs big enough here to throw my car out into the street. So there's some different things. But, I mean, overall, I yeah. love it because there's no winter. It's always nice here. I'll take it. Right. That's like California. It's the same. So I, I do, do the back what and forth. Doing in, doing what are you doing in Tennessee, then? How does that work? You go from beautiful. What's in Tennessee? Fill me in. Love. Love. Okay. What do you, you know what love's about. Yeah. Yeah. My yeah. other half moved here in 2004. Okay. And I was like, man, I just bought my house. I don't want to have to relocate. So we did the back and forth for a very long time. And that just after a while doesn't work. It right. Doesn't. Yep. You have there's no way. All that. Yeah. Sure. Yep. Sure. And then I decided since I travel so much, let me try traveling for, from Nashville. That was a no-brainer for me to get to the East Coast two hours, up to Cleveland, right. an hour and ten minutes, down right. to you guys. You know, it. Right. I was doing this all from California, and all my work was this way. And well, silly, I'm like, silly me. I'm really sorry. I should have realized as a musician, what's in what's in Tennessee? Durr, Nashville. Can I ask? Can I ask you about your other half? Can you tell the yeah. folks at home? Just yeah. exactly who and what Ryan is to the music world, please. Yeah. So, so Ryan first, he's a musician. He's played. He plays guitar and he sings. The first band was Hair of the Dog, which I don't remember Hair of the Dog, but Ryan play, is a singer for that band. They traveled everywhere, opening up for bands like Skid Row, Rat, all of those type of bands back in the day. Well, when he was a kid, he was a huge fan of Kiss. He is. He loved Kiss. Well, he ended up getting to play with Gene Simmons' solo band when Gene wasn't on the road with Kiss, so he did two or three years with Gene. Then Ace decided when they were all in Australia to steal the band, but it was okay. Gene was like, yeah, he goes, we're going back on the road with Kiss, and go ahead. So as we speak, actually, he's on the East Coast. Um, I think they flew in the East Coast, so he's with Ace Freely right now, Freely. I'm sorry, I always say it wrong. It's not Freely, it's Freely. Ace Fraley. Andrew, uh, so Andrew, had, Andrew, An Andrew Anderson isn't tagging along, is he? <laughs> no. Uh, no, not anymore. <laughs> Wait a minute. All right, hold on, Jeannie. I got to ask you, you know Andrew? I'm shocked that you – because I know he's no longer with them, but obviously you know him and you know he's not tagging along. <laughs> and I know he's not there. Oh, my God. Okay, Four show over. Three. I got my laugh. I'm done. <laughs> Shock yeah, me. It is what it is. <laughs> that's you know, hilarious. That and that's what Ace does. He gets rid of, he's that guy. You know, <laughs> right. no wait, wait a minute. To Andrew. Hold I don't want to disrespect let, let, anyone. Let so. me just say it. He gets rid of dead wood, Ace. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. Oh, oh my God. boy. No, that is... he's just, it is what it is. That's how Ace is, you know? He's yeah. One it's way, it's... way and then the other way. Maybe that, yeah. Yeah, yeah, he's probably he's probably still mad that they're wearing his makeup in the uh, in the real kiss, but I, he's got his right to be angry. He does. I know. He's I know. got his right to be angry. Yes. Oh my God, Holly. Drama. Let's move on. Let's, I don't let's... like drama. <laughs> God, and you got involved in wrestling and music, and you don't like drama. <laughs> you know what? Well, really, well, I mean, my God. <laughs> but I, if you noticed, I stay out of it. I did not date anybody in that business. There you go. No. There you go. People would ask me, uh, do you date a wrestler? I looked at them. I'm like, hell no. But a musician is different. <laughs> and Ryan and I, we've been together for 21, 22 years. Right. That's that's saying. So, you know, right. and it's so great. It works for us because he's on the road, comes back. I'm on the road, comes back. It makes for a really good relationship, really, because you're not 24-7, mm. you right. know, and we're so independent. You. Both of us, we're both A personalities, and you know that that sometimes doesn't work, well, but it works so, for us. So, Hollywood, it's really a matter of trust, right? If you trust yeah, the person you're is, with. If you don't have that, that's it. you have absolutely nothing. 
Agreed. Well, let me. You know, we'll, he'll be on tour. I don't care when he's on tour. I know there's girls. He knows there's guys. But at the end of the day, you just there's no jealousy. I mean, we all have a little. Everybody, let's just be honest. Everyone has a tiny bit because that's normal. You know, you could go, oh wow, she's she's really beautiful. Well, you know, but I'm not that girl. I don't have to be. I'm very secure. He makes me always feel that way, and I make him feel the same yeah, way, but, and that's why it works. But all right, so I'm gonna I'm gonna call you out on this one because let's let's be honest here, okay? In relationships, I always call it like that scale, and I know if you could hear see my hands moving, right? And yeah. when you get in a yeah. relationship, you just can't have someone have this much more than the other. You're, you've always been an intelligent, beautiful woman. And let's be honest, this guy's a good-looking, talented guy. So you guys have this level. It's not like, you know, hypothetically, you're not dating me. I mean, if you're on the road dating me, you're looking at other guys. Trust me. You're like, yeah, I think I'm done. <laughs> but So let's yeah, be fair. You kind of got that measured up. You're kind of evened up there. Oh, my God. oh, you're sweet. And it worked very well. Again, it's trust. I don't care if he was... Well, he, we were very attracted to each other. Let's just put it that right. way. Right, but let me. Ask I knew right away when I met him. I met him in California. I'm like, I have never seen this dude here in California. What are? Where have you been? You know, I I was born and raised here, dude. You know where? And it just, I knew right away. I go, I will be with that person. This is the person I will marry. I will be with you for the rest of my life. I knew that. But as my mother said, when I moved to Nashville, she goes, you know, Jeannie. You know, she goes, things can change when you guys start living together. And she's right. They do. It's just, but I don't mean change in a bad way. It's just like, okay, now, okay, you're here. When are you leaving? No. <laughs> right. right. No. It's not like that. But we get along How very romantic. well. We love, this, we love the same music. <laughs> we have great friends. We both like to go out still and see our friends play and support them. And uh, we like the same food, and we're just very compatible. But but let me ask you this, though. Obviously, both of you very talented. How about an ego conflict, right? Don't you – you both have egos, right? Uh, at what point do you ever have conflicts between your egos? No. Wow. Never. That's incredible. Ever. I had somebody like that a long time ago that was like, um, <laughs> I'm not even going to say it. <laughs> I don't want to go there. But, no, we do not because Ryan – is a very humbled, gracious person. And I learned a lot from him. I thought this person should be more like this. And he wasn't that way. Kind and gracious and, you know, grateful to, to have the job that he does. So he's different. Girls might have a little more ego, but Ryan has always had it down. And, and that's what I love about him. Doesn't have to have it. But if he gets mad, you know what I mean? I've only seen him get angry a few times and I don't want, trust me, I wouldn't want him to get mad at me. I mean, he's like, woo. He, so, he sounds like he's a nice man, but he also sounds like he's the man. That's, that's He's funny. the man. That's, and that's what's so right. important in relationships. I could not, I am not the man in the relationship, nor do I want to be. Right. But, but it's, it's even into that part. I don't want someone that's going to kiss my ass. I'm telling you right now, I've had that and it never worked. I'm like, goodbye. <laughs> You know, <laughs> well, I'm like, you want that girl? Interesting, Go ahead and interesting. <laughs> that is so interesting. If so, if, so if they're not, if they're nice, they get boring. Very interesting. <laughs> very, very interesting. Well, right. Jimmy, you know, in, a, in a certain way, you got it. It's just a formula. There's a formula there. It's, it's the scale. It's, you got the scale working there. Look there's at you. A there's a formula. How, and whatever how would... formula works for you works for you. Not uh -huh. everyone has the same formula. Jimmy, Hollywood, Jeannie, Dr. before Jimmy, Jeannie, before we get into because yeah. I want to get into the yeah. whole like career and we got a lot of stuff to cover yeah, okay, on yeah, a yeah. short amount true, of time. True. Well, I'll come back again, I promise. All right, but I want to get into a quick news item because I listen, Jimmy. I know where you stand on a lot of stuff. Hollywood, on the other hand, everybody loves her, so I don't want to put her on a spot. But let's see where she goes with this. I'll be quick with it. Some Gen Zers are relying on their parents to help them with their jobs. Some are even inviting their moms and dads to attend the job interview when they're interviewing. Guys, can we weigh in on what's happening right now in the United States of America that we have to bring our parents to a job interview? And by the way, I saw a chart of people that apply for the job and they're asked to come in for an interview, only 70% show up. Of that 70%, 
over 30% of them come underdressed. And when I talk about underdressed, they're wearing sandals and pajamas. Yeah, that look, I see it in the airport all the time. I took a picture of the guy in front of me because it was his jammas and his little Crocs or the sandals. I I don't get that. I cannot go in my pajamas to the airport. No. And you are so right. I have a friend that works at a, he's a manager at a GNC, you know, those vitamin stores. He cannot keep people employed. They come and they leave. They steal. They're not supposed to do this. They... They're horrible. I, I, I hate to say it. This generation, what is wrong with you guys? It's like, have some dignity. Grow some balls, man. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Jimmy, what are you thinking? Well, you know me. Anytime that there's some sort of crisis that develops, there's a point of origin. And to me, this all started back with participation trophy. <laughs> I played today. I get a trophy, don't I? No, you don't. You play a 32-game schedule if you're an idiot like me who plays Sunday fast-pitch softball, and you try to win a championship, which took seven freaking years to do. You don't get a trophy. And then the other guy who wins rubs it in on you because it's competition. So to me, it all started with participation trophies. Now i got to bring my mom to my job interview. You see how this gets carried away? Because I do. Crazy. Yeah. Pretty lame. Very lame. It's, it's like, I'm wondering, man, what is the future of, you know, what's the future of this country? I, With, I, is there going to be a president? <laughs> I, I am so Are they glad. Are going to bring their mother? <laughs> I am so glad you're saying that because uh, um, I, I think I told a story a couple of weeks ago. And by the way, again, I want to remind everybody, we've got the great uh, Hollywood from Glow coming uh she's in between where we got this big run of these great stars and it's such an honor to have her on our show again and her taking a time out of her personal schedule which is constantly busy but hollywood i was, I was explaining to jimmy a couple of weeks ago and greg Gagne in an interview um you know we're dedicating an entire month to human being sexuality right and where they want to go which is fine yeah but we also give one day to a veteran who uh, serves for his country, gives us gives us the right to do a podcast or travel and, uh, right. you know, have the dignity. And uh, I was telling a story where I was in the um, I was in a diner and there was a uh, Korean War vet there. And uh, I went over to thank him for his service, paid for his dinner. Um, and I'm not saying it because I want someone to say, nice. hey, great job. But the yeah. point of the matter is the guy started crying. And it clearly oh. stated to me that in today's generation doesn't even respect what these what these people have done to give us these rights. And right. I have a huge fear. Again, Gina, I know your, your mom is still with us, I think, right? Yeah, my mom and dad. Yeah. So you've got great generic uh, genetics on my end. I think me and Jimmy got a couple of years left. But, but that being said, what I'm saying is yeah. we're going to transition <laughs> – out of life and really not see the come uh, accumulation of all these problems, right? It's our kids that are going to yeah. see it. And but I got I, nephews. My nephews are young. Yeah. You know? What's going to, what is it? I think about it all the time. If you, I, I love history for one thing. And I go back to the 16th century or the 17th century. And that's just like four to 500 years ago. That's it. We're not, this country isn't that old. And, what will it be like in 500 years? What, will there be people here? Will we all be on the moon? I mean, will we be destroyed? It's, you know, will we blow up because it's too hot? I don't know. No, it's it, ev everything you're saying is 100% true. And it's, you know, we're, we're heading away. We're heading in a way where as human beings, you're a, you're a strong, independent woman, right? Um, yeah. I consider myself a strong, independent man. Jimmy's a strong, independent man. Yes. We are eliminating the individual's uh, capitalist ideas. This country is built on capitalism, right? And yeah. we're making this into a completely socialist environment. I understand yeah. our government has some sort of socialist uh, parts to it, but overall we're capitalist, right? This is what it's built on. But we are becoming a socialist government. We're, we're yeah. going to find ourselves in a deep, some deep doo-doo. Yeah, it's, it's scary. It really is. It, I wish you know, I could all, be on this all, earth. I wish I could see what's happening in a hundred years. 
God. I don't you know. know. Ultimately, not to be a Nostradamus about things, but my Jewish realism is going to kick in right now, so forgive me. I believe that eventually man will use his toys because a boy must play with his toys. I'm referring to nuclear weapons. A boy must play with his toys. One, someone on this earth is going to say, let me see what happens when I push this when button. Push, yeah. Right. Now, yeah. We, will Some not, psycho. we will not manage to wipe out all of us. We will not kill no. each other off entirely. What will happen is, is what happened to the dinosaurs, and Mother Earth will have final say, like you said. Maybe it'll get too hot, or maybe we'll have a replay, and it'll get too damn cold. But when the Earth has had enough of us, just like George Carlin used to say, the infection will be removed, and the Earth will go on. So right. there you have my... There you that's go. My, that's my two cents on that. Yeah. Holly, why don't, we, why don't we shift gears a little bit and actually talk a little wrestling? Obviously, yes. you're you're a legend from Glow. Uh, most people, I don't know if they realize this, but you were on the entire run of Glow. I think you're the only one, if I'm not mistaken, that was on the entire run of Glow. How was your Hollywood persona developed? How did that all come about? Was it was it something you worked on behind the scenes? Was it an idea given to you from a promoter? How do how do we yeah. get Hollywood? That's a good question because when we were being trained by Mondo Guerrero. There was, they told us there'll be 12 girls that they're going to use for a pilot. They also had 12 lists of names, and they were matching those character names with the personalities. Oh, my God, I hope they don't give me the Russian. I hope they don't give me this one. I hope they don't. When I heard the names Hollywood and Vine and Tina and Ashley, I'm like, yeah, I get both of those. I could be either one of those girls. And when they said, Jeannie, you're going to be Hollywood, I was, like, thrilled. I'm from California anyway. And Hollywood is just such a great, but then I was like, well, what does this character do? What, you know, and so we kind of had to figure it out on our own. All I knew is they gave it that Vine and I were pickpockers. I'm like, oh boy, I don't want to be a pickpocker, pickpocketer. I know I'm a heel, so this is great. So basically it's eighties. What's cool about the eighties for me is music. I love music of the eighties. I love those video vixens all over the internet on MTV dressed in their little skirts and their hair is crimped and, you know, leather and, and chains. And so I just brought that into the character. I'm like, so it was super easy. It's super easy when you know, see, and when you're finally comfortable with who your character is, you're not afraid of anything anymore. You can look at the fans in their eyes and instead of them running you, you run them. Mm -hmm. You take over. You are the one that takes over. And it took a minute, you know, to figure it out. And plus I hadn't wrestled before. i would never been in front of a live audience shooting in front of four cameras. So it was super scary, uh, but I did it. And I was young. And again, I always say this, when you're young, you are fearless. Speaking of Glow, last time you were in studio, Glow was a hot series on Netflix, unfortunately. I don't know yes. why they did it. They canceled it, which I still don't understand why they did or they, someone else didn't pick it up. But at the point, we would talk, uh, Babe, the farmer's daughter, was still with us. Um, yes. And I think there was some animosity between yourself and uh, others not with, with it, Babe. Yeah, um, not, with, not with Babe. I mean, we, we always fought in Glow, but that's because they were the farmer's daughters. But I was always honest with her, and I would say, yeah, we're going to play this place because, yeah, it smells like beer and cigarettes in here. It's a bar. Hello. I go, but we're going to put on a show. And then she'd look at me and go, God, Hollywood. And I would go, you know what? You're lucky I see it to your face and behind your back like everybody else does here. Mm. And I didn't care. I said it. And, you know, we have respect for each other uh, because, you know, you play, a, you play a gig. You do your gig if there's 10 people in the audience. Uh, you know, we had to, like if it was snowing and there was 20 people, which happened in North Carolina or South Carolina, I can't remember. We had to play that. We just looked at it as a practice, but people paid. So we did the show, you know, and, and during the show, I would think, I thought that we had a really good group of girls, really. And what I really loved about the diversity of the women, we had all shapes and sizes, you didn't have to look like WWE girls, you know, the same look. You had different personalities and different looks. Black, white, Asian, it was incredible. Very unique, I would say. How does it how does uh, it feel? You've lost a couple of members of the Great Glow original yeah. cast. 
uh, and especially for women that are passing away. How does that affect you personally? It hurts right here. It just does because I felt like they were like your sisters, you know, you know, and a lot of us didn't hang together because we weren't allowed because there was kayfabe back in the day. So you're not supposed to hang with everybody. So you don't know them as well. Um, and then for me, season three and four, they would let me come in later. I could come in on a Wednesday and leave after the show on a Saturday. So I wasn't there to really, you know, hang. But when you hear Mountain Fiji, who I worked with, who was in the show season one all the way through four, she just didn't do the pilot. Uh, that hurts. Matilda the Hun, both Vine and I hung out with Matilda the Hun um, a lot. We went shopping together. We laughed together. We had sketches together. We have rap songs together. We did, you know, eating pizza together. It hurts. Uh, the Farmer's Daughters, that was just more for me. What, it's cancer for both of those ladies. It is horrible. It's not, oh, Tara the Southern Belle was the first one. Yeah. She was in season one and two. She wore the pink with the long blonde hair. Her and I used to go to concerts together. I made her go, not made, but I go, let's go see uh, Metallica open up for Ozzy. Oh, it was tremendous. It was so fun. But yeah, it hurts. <laughs> Speaking Hollywood, I told give, you I like my music. Hollywood, give us, give us your five favorite bands. Who does Hollywood love all time? Like, give me your top five uh, bands. It's in my book that's coming out. Hooray for Hollywood, the original Glow Girl. We're so close. It's coming out in August, you guys. I'm super excited. Can, can you tell? Okay, can um, you tell? Well, before you get that, can you tell yeah. us a little more about that? Because now I'm pretty excited about that. Can you fill me us in? Me too. I think I'm the only one. I know other people have talked about trying to write something. I've been trying to write this damn thing for years and years and years, trying to find someone that has my voice. I'm not the best, you know, writer. So I wanted it. To, I needed someone to have my voice, which I found quite a few people. But um, I started writing notes back in the day. And thank goodness I wrote those notes because the mind, it just does. I don't care what you think that you have. The mind sometimes forgets little tiny things. I also have a book from Glow where all my matches are written down, all my rap songs. I have itineraries on PSA Airlines, um, which is, you know, not around anymore. But so thank goodness for those notes. And Steve Blance. Do you guys remember Steve Blance? He was on your show with me. Yes. The writer from yep, Glow. I do. He's, he's very, very well spoken he rem he's a huge wrestling fan and he brought a lot to this reminding me certain things i'll go hey steve what about this did this happen or did this happen and then i'll back it up with somebody else that was there just to make sure so everything that i have written about is from my truth from what i remember and i did try to make it uh as authentic as personal uh, as i could my book is classy I'm prom it's not trashy, so it's not going to be that kind of a book. I didn't want to represent that, um, but there, it's there's great stories. There's good stories, you know. And and now in the day, do you want to get sued? You know what I mean? No, no right. one wants. Everyone sues for whatever. Nobody wants to to get sued. So it's got to go through legal and make sure that everything is. What's the word? I guess legal not legal but just you know again i can give you a story uh netflix do you guys watch netflix at all all the time all the time okay i don't i've never seen it but i always see the ad for baby reindeer there was an article they are getting netflix is getting sued 170 million dollars because of the woman who the story is about is it said this is a true story and the story, they switched everything all around, made her older, made her sound terrible the way she spoke. Um, you're supposed to say it is, there's another word for it. Um, like based on a true story. Based right. On yeah, right. Those two words, based. Yeah. So, you know, when it comes to a book, you could, you know, not everyone, there's a lot of nasty people out there. That's all, you know, and they sometimes don't want to see anybody do well. I mean, I, well, I got to ask you this, and I, we got to get back to Jimmy's me. question because I want to hear you two talk about bands. But oh yeah, you're pretty loved, okay? What kind of nasty stuff do you do? You get any kind of nasty Instagrams or X comments? I can't imagine it because you you're one of the most politest people I've ever met, right? 
Not anymore. I think those people have kept their mouths shut. Uh, I had to serve somebody with two cease and desist letters because two promoters were, were telling me what someone was saying. And I'm like, they're like, we know that's absolutely not true, but we need to let you know what this person is saying. It's just, are, are you bored? Are you out of your mind? It's just like, I could never, it was the way I was brought up. When you're brought up Catholic, mom and dad who are conservative, you know, you're brought up a certain way and those values, thank God, they stay with you. And they did with me. So uh, I'm blessed. I'm humbled every day to, to be on this planet. Um, no one's perfect, first of all. I am not perfect. None of us are. I mean, in Glow, I love playing a heel and I love being dirty and I love picking someone between the legs or, you know, just whatever I could do. Um, and you no don't and you don't live in Iowa. Imagine if you had to live in Iowa. In where? Iowa. See, you don't even know where oh, it yeah, is. I it's so bad. Yeah, what a state. Where? <laughs> All right. What a state. I got to hear I got to hear the I got to hear the, I gotta hear the okay. band talk, guys. I got I I want to see this. Let's go. Thank you for that. Okay, band okay. talk. That's a tough one. 5 is hard, but Van Halen, Led cool. Zeppelin. Cool. So far okay. so cool. So far, I know, so cool. far. Van Halen. Hold on. I like Black Sabbath and Ozzy. I love yes, that kind Oh, wait. Yes. Stop going. right there. Wait a minute. Stop right there. Right. Stop right there. He's killing it. I, one, I need a, let's ask the ultimate question because we've had this what? discussion. Who does Hollywood what? like better? Does she like Dio or does she like Ozzy? As the Ozzy? Leader for Sabbath. Thank Ozzy. you. Thank you. Why? Case closed. Case closed, because, Mike. Give because it up. Dio is freaking great. Don't get me wrong. But by the way, yes. I went to a Halloween party at his house. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. He's nice. about that. Uh, when he was obviously alive. Yeah. Uh, bless his soul. Um, but anyway, uh, I like Ozzy only because he's been around longer. And Black Sabbath, listen to that. That's still, to me, fresh. Just like Led Zeppelin. When I hear Led Zeppelin songs, that is still new. That kind of music is. And Van Halen. Oh, my God. I was too young, but I would have would have loved to go to their parties in Pasadena. It was only like fifteen minutes from Burbank, you know. <laughs> I wasn't yeah. old enough. So. Yeah, how can you how can you not love ba ba da shuba doo ba 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 da shuba doo ba 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 boom ba ba da. That's there. Very good. There's a, you got two more. You got two more. Two more bands. Come on. Hold on. I can't see. This is where it gets blurry. Like, I like Aerosmith. Um, see, I like the old stuff. Um, Thank you. Metallica. Thank you. I do like Metallica. Very good. Yeah, they're pretty good. Yeah. I've Mike, you know, Mike, you, don't, you do notice that there's no Taylor Swift on this list, right, Mike? You can't. No. Hey, listen, wait a minute. Hold on, guys. Too old for I, can, Taylor. I cannot have any Swifty <laughs> problems. We cannot speak poorly on Taylor Swift. They will shut us down. Jimmy, you hate to get attacked. You will get destroyed. Just do not do it. I'm trying to warn everybody here. Tra if Travis I have children, he's great. Tra Don't get me wrong. He's amazing. Travis, Travis Kelsey sucks. Mike, I, you were breaking up. What did you say? <laughs> Him or me? My no. God. I'm being and I love Lenny Kravitz. Krav Lenny Kravitz is badass. Oh, there you go. Wow. All right, okay. so Jimmy, before you came on, Jeannie, Jimmy asked me, uh, he said he was watching a podcast. and oh, they and it's they, Kiss. What am I talking about? Kiss. Well, right, exactly. So, Huge fan. Jimmy, what was Hello. what was the question? Bet ask Jeannie the question between uh, Heaven and okay. L and Detroit Rock. I think it was whatever you said it was. Okay, I, I, was watching, I, was, I was watching the great Ralph Vieira's YouTube channel where he was comparing – he would do track by track, and he would take albums and pair them against each other, track by track, and see who wins at the end of the uh, selection. So oh, fine. It, it, oh, it's awesome. It's a great idea. So it was Kiss Destroyer, the album Destroyer, uh, yeah. versus, versus Black Sabbath, The Mob Rules, with Ronnie James Dio. Now, I voted, in the end, 5-4 to four for Mob Rules. He voted 6-3. What say you? Which is the better album? Kiss Destroyer that's got Detroit Rock City, Kiss Shout it destroyer. out loud. You don't have Kiss Destroyer. Wow. Okay. Wow. There it yes. is, Mike. Wow. Well, yeah. There it and is. And I'm wearing the Kiss shirt. I mean, how could I not? They're definitely in my top five, of course. Okay. Yeah. That works. All right. Yeah. I, got, I, was in the, before, I was in the Kiss Army when I was 10. Of course you were. <laughs>
funny you guys were. All the oh kids my in my school in seventh grade were. How they were wearing their go. kiss buckles and their kiss hats and shirts. And then my first album I got because I was in seventh grade, so 1970 something. Uh, I got Kiss Alive 2. That was nice. the first one that I got. And that two double album. And I could name when I met Ryan and when I told him I like Kiss as well. I said, I have Kiss Alive 2. And I named him every song on every side. Mm. He probably was like, oh my God, this girl gets me already. It's my it's dream girl. Cool. All right, yeah. wait a minute. You talked about going to a Dio Halloween party. You got to tell a story. So, yeah, um, of course, when he was alive, um, a guy that I was dating uh, was in a band and it was managed by Wendy Dio. So Wendy had invited, uh, it was Paul Sortino. I know he was the singer of the band. Paul was, it was Rough Cut. Maybe it was Rough Cut. I don't remember. But um, we were all invited because she managed the band. And I went to his house in Encino for Halloween. He had fortune tellers there, people doing your cards. I asked him, he had this beautiful dark bar. And I asked him, I said, Ronnie, I said, where did you get this beautiful bar? He goes, we imported it from, from a bar in England. I thought, oh, how cool is that? And then his whole home had beautiful uh, antiques. And I said, he goes, you should see upstairs. Well, no one was upstairs. I'm, I go, am I allowed to go up there? He goes, go ahead. You can go up there. I open the doors. Beautiful furniture in all of the, uh, in his home. There was also, I remember, walking up the stairs was a big uh, knight, you know, the knight in yeah. shining armor type of thing. He had that, and he had one beautiful library, and I'm a person that loves books as well. I don't read them as much, but I like the way they look. <laughs> but he had this library. He had this library, all three walls, packed with books, one king's, like a king, a king's chair, one right in the middle where he would sit there and read his oh books. It was so cool. How cool yeah. is that, man? Yeah. Good God, I want to be rich. Um, yeah. I, I want to respect. I want to. I want to. Res you. I want to respect your time, but um, I, I have a quick question for you. So you've been in. A, sure. You've been in a lot of good movies, right? Uh, you know, you've been on what? Married with Children, Larry Sanders Show, which is oh my gosh, yeah. friggin' loved the Larry Sanders Show. Living oh my gosh, color. He was amazing. He when I took his hand, he's one of those germ guys. So I somebody had introduced me. Uh, Brent Carpenter introduced me, and I said hi, Larry, and I went to shake his hand. And after I shook it, he went, uh, and he went like this. <laughs> Wait, I gotta ask. I gotta ask you though. Did Hank? Did Hank go to you? Hey now, Hollywood. Hey now. I don't remember. Oh my god. Yeah, yeah I know what you're talking about. Yeah. Uh, maybe I don't remember. But remember Jeremy Piven? Oh. Jeremy. Yep. He started on that show, Jeremy. Yeah. And then got popular on what's that one with all those boys? Oh, uh, um, good God. Uh. Jesus. That one. Yes, the HBO show. Oh, my God. I'm the freezing. HBO. Yes. Uh, Entourage. The Entourage. Yeah. Yes, yes. Yes. And Jeremy, I real, I'm like, oh, my God. I remember when he was doing the Larry Sanders show. We all went to dinner uh, after the show to, um, after the show was taped. We went to, like, sushi somewhere. And Jeremy was also there at the table. Just, just a small world, you know, the people that you meet. Well, the, the thing I was amazed, you were on one of my favorite movies, Me, Myself, and Irene. And I'm like, I don't I remember was, her on that. I got, yeah, I got to look. The end. You know, there's a lot of things that you do that just don't get picked up after a while. You still get paid and you still get residual. Right. But at the end of the day, you could be on the cutting floor somewhere. That also happened with the TV show In Living Color. I'm playing a school kid and I'm going to prom and my dress, there's one of those guys is supposed to step on the dress and the dress falls off. Right. Which it did. And then I'm in underwear. They cut that. They weren't allowed. So I still get I still get residuals from that show. All right. So I got to ask you, you. never saw it. There's, there's another movie in here, The Lollipop Gang. I don't know. What is that? <laughs> oh, yeah. Christopher's <laughs> thing. You yeah. did it. You didn't just name drop that, did you? I did. I dropped it. Oh, my God. That was nice of you. Yeah, Christopher's show. Yep. We worked on that. And we, 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 he, yeah. <laughs> I see it up on IMDb every once in a while. I don't know. I'll have to catch it. I, that one I missed, but um... yeah. 
Hey, I want to tell you one other thing before I go. Yes. So you know how you do job. You have you take a job or an acting job or a gig here and there, and then you do it. And you forget about that you have done it until it comes back up again. So in 1994, um, I was in a video game. So that was 94. It was called a 3DO system. A 3DO. Let me just look at it. It was an interactive romantic comedy called Plumbers Don't Wear Ties. Wow. I look play a character. Look how old this is. Holy cow. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so uh, this is what it looks like today, redone. Check this out. This is the Nintendo oh. Switch. Dude, how so, cool is it you're on a video game? Like, my God, this is like unfair. Right. But the, I didn't know about this, not this, but I didn't know all these people started emailing me when the internet got, you know, more popular. They're like, hey, I found you. You're Jane from Plumbers Don't Wear Tears. I go, how do you know who I am? Where are you finding this info? Right. They, they, they are gamers, and gamers are huge. People, they're, they're big fans. They said that they saw me on YouTube, the Angry Video Nerd Game Guy. Wow. Uh-huh. So I went there, and the views were incredible. It was over 8 million then. Today, it's 9.6 million views. So a company called Limited Run Games on the East Coast got a hold of me, found me, and said, we're buying the rights from this guy. Wow. And we want you to come in and do some commentary and then maybe just do a new beginning for us, and then we'll use you for some of our conventions like PAX East, which I did in Boston this year. It was unbelievable, you guys. The convention at PAX East Boston. I've been to a lot of conventions and big ones. That was huge. I, so, plumbers don't wear ties. There it is. Jesus. I got to tell you, if you go to YouTube, there's kids playing, not kids, men, playing video yeah. games. And there's like 2 million people watching. And I'm like, what right? is this? What is going on? Uh, yeah, clearly I should have been in this inter this, this <laughs> part of entertainment. You, know, you ain't kidding, man. My God. I mean, come on. Nine million views, you guys. Glow. Our glow matches never had those hits. That's what I'm talking about. Mm. Well. So you either love this game or you hate it. I People love it. Just I love it. I already love it. I don't play video games, but I love it already. I don't Thank know. Thank you. But um, It says, greed, sex, spirituality, white knuckle chases, shameful. Propositions, a nun, humor, true love, jaded love, jealousy, punk action, comedy, a bad guy, a good guy, blah, blah, blah. Jimmy, do you know how much money that YouTube channel probably makes off of those views? Right? You know, I was thinking of... I was thinking about everything she just described that she just read, and I'm thinking about my entire life. I'm like, I don't need a video game. I'm already living it. What the hell do I need a game for? Flying <laughs> Kingling, a hero, a hot you babe, got, a brazen you, you got good guys. You got bad guys. You got good love. You got jaded love. You got this problem. You got that turmoil. You got. It sounds Damn like. Damn, in the stress. You know what's it's really stress. crazy? Hollywood, Listen. what's really crazy about it is, is the story you're telling me was reminded me of that movie where they found the Coke bottle in the sand. You left this thing in the sand like how many years ago? What is that movie? The gods must be crazy. And all of a sudden now you've got this thing going on with it? 9.6 what? what? Yeah. And what is going on here? Is that Mike, crazy? Is that Mike, does that mean the electric sunset's about to go platinum? I mean, there's what's going a, on there's here? a possibility. So, look, I want to, wow. I want to, I want to respect Hollywood's time because she was kind enough to come on the show. I, Jeannie, thank, thank you, you thank I'm you so much. When, the, when this book is out, not this book, when the book is out, let's come back on and talk about it. Absolutely. Without, let me let me ask right. you this question: When the book does come out, will yeah. you also be signing the book where people yes. can buy it signed? Yes. Excellent. Yes. Excellent. It'll be at all the wrestling conventions I do. CAC is coming up. Uh, Cauliflower Alley Club is August 19th. I'm hoping that it would be ready to go for our, for that. That'll be the first place. Well, I'll, awesome. I I will buy, be buying that book. And, Jimmy, I'll be reading it on the beach, drinking some wine, brother. You know what I'm saying? I love it. You guys are so awesome. I thank you so much for having me on. We Very thank honor. you. Thank what an honor. Very and welcome. thank you again. Very welcome. You're, you're a well, wonderful human being, and thank you again for joining us. Thank you so much, Guy. You got a good heart. I love it. All right. You we'll guys have a good soon. night. Be well. Uh, Thanks, Hollywood. Thank you. Jimmy, the great Hollywood brother. That was awesome. She's How cool, cool is she, man? She's got great taste in music, I'll tell you that. Well, I got to – listen, wait. Uh, I, I'm going to argue. Uh, not that she doesn't have good taste in music. Don't get me wrong. 
But I'm sorry. I got to go with heaven and hell. I'm sorry. I got to do it. With what? That was mob rules, you ding dong. Uh, mob rules. I'm sorry. But heaven mob and hell, rules. too. Let's throw Mike, that out there. Mike, I did track for track, and I told you before the show, I picked the mob rules. I had five to four for mob rules. So there it is right there. I, I got I got to tell you. The, the, you know, like in life, there's unicorns, right? Yeah. The, there isn't unicorns. But she's a – with being respectful, she's a fucking unicorn. I mean, she's cool. Right. She's into right. cool shit. She's good let looking. Me, let she's me smart. I mean, let come me on, you, man. Let me tell you something else, too. It's all who you, who you match up with, who you decide to be with, who decides to be with you and stuff. It sounds to me like her and her boyfriend are a couple of Derek Jeters. Does that make any sense? Like well, let, you just said, unicorn. Let me let me ask you a serious. You let's know? be serious, right? You're my brother, and we're yeah. always honest with each other. And I know we're on air. Tough question. If you were okay. dating Hollywood, for example, could you yeah. not be jealous? Is it possible? Like, I've answered this. To, I've answered this to you before. Karen's well known too. Absolutely. I. I I do not. You can't function that way. That is not how you operate through through any. Well, it's not how you should operate through any relationship. Dude, I'm not. A, I'm not a jealous guy. I never have been. Right. But I right. think. Look, I think when someone is as incredible as that, it's like. Remember, we were talking about a year ago about Ariana Grande, and if you had her as a a girlfriend and she left you, it's like, where do you go from there? Like, where do I go right. from here? You know what I mean? Right. And well, it's like I, Hollywood's one of those people like, um, where do you go from here? I mean, on the script, uh, you know, she had told me she had she had a pretty busy schedule today, so she was really kind to come on. Um, I did want to ask her. She's been in a lot of movies. She's been in wrestling. She travels a lot. I was going to ask her, considering what's going on with the casting counts and Vince McMahon, and I'm asking you what you think. Obviously, you don't know the truth, neither do I. <laughs> How often do you think she's pressured to do things that she doesn't want to do? And she seems like, not seems like, she's definitely one of those people that say no, guaranteed. But right. how often right. do you think that happens to her? Um, you know what? I Obviously, I can't answer for her. All I can do is throw out my own hypothesizing about that question. I bet you uh, it is more likely than not that she probably dealt with some nonsense early on in her career. But then again... She had a special traje- trajectory going right into GLOW. It wasn't like she was working in the territories or dealing with moolah. She was trained by a Guerrero. She went right into a television program situation, not necessarily a house show territorial thing. So I don't know how different it could have been for her. If she did encounter the bullshit that you speak of, probably happened early in her career, Probably quickly fucking put a snip on it because I do agree with you. Your read on her is correct. She's not going to take any shit. Mm. All right. And I really heavily doubt anybody would have the balls or the brains to be that stupid to to screw with her on that level. I would say nowadays for sure. So I don't think that she deals with it now. And she probably had to deal with it perhaps in the beginning for a little bit. But she found her way through this thing quite safely, I'm sure, once she got past the nonsense. If she did encounter and he such said nonsense. And by the way, I've got to give Jimmy tons of credit because I hit him hard during that interview. And it took him a bit, but he got back under control because I was out of control. <laughs> but I had you, dude. I got you. I got you. Uh, on what? Why? You're the confusing question. Me. Come on, dude. You were dying. It was hard to hold your left. <laughs> Oh what? Oh for God's sakes, man! By the way, I gotta go get a bag of I gotta go get a bag of Charms Blow Pops. I'll be right back, dude. I had you. I could I could hear you laughing. Like you, it was like one of those times where you had uncontrollable laughter, but you recovered right. fairly quickly, though. Oh well, you do that to me often, which I actually appreciate. I think it's one of the best parts of the show when you can just make me combust like that in laughter. So that's that doesn't happen often enough. I like that. So next week, everybody. So we've got the iconic Wendy Richter in. Rarely does interviews if she does any at all. What she means to pro wrestling, in my opinion, um, the rock and wrestling thing started this whole thing we're watching now. Without that, who knows where we are in wrestling. Um, But let's be honest. Cyndi Lauper, Wendy Richter, Moolah, Lou Albano, 
you know, when you have a mark match, that was the spark that started it all. Agreed, Jimmy? Yeah, it was. I mean, there's a point of origin for everything. Of course, at the end of the day, there had to be an ultimate face or a Babe Ruth of that movement, and that turned out to be Hulk. But, of course, without this, without the MTV connection, without directly tapping into the veins of high schoolers like you and me all the way from here to California, no, none of this happens. Captain Lou Albano and girls just want to have fun. You know, it all starts with that. MTV doing the brawl for, you know what? You're right about that card. The greatest card that you ever saw. In, and I can't believe you saw that in person. Is that correct? That is the correct, brawl for it all? Yes, it is. That, is. that is one of the most golden, most important moments in wrestling. And somehow it's getting glossed over historically. Without that on MTV, they just tapped into all our veins, man. All of us from here to, like I said, from here across the country and eventually across the world. So it all starts with that, with Lauper and Albano and, and of course, Mulan and Richter and leading into the Hogan stuff and, and the entertainment, the E and entertainment that eventually the initial stood for in the end. It all starts with that, man. It does. I want to, we've got a couple of minutes left. I wanted to recap because we, listen, guys, we've had a pretty successful run here recently um, and we're trying to get as many great guests as we can. Obviously, and you know, we like doing the show by ourselves too. There's a lot of different things going on, but I wanted to open up with Greg Gagne. What were your thoughts on Greg Gagne? We didn't get a chance to really speak about it. Greg was very, I was very pleasantly surprised. I wasn't sure what we were going to get with Greg. You know, I, I wasn't sure if he was going to be, uh, as I've said, surly or uh, standoffish, but he was anything but that. He was, he was awesome. I found him to be a, one of our, one of my favorite guests we've had on the show. Quite honestly, which which you which you transferred that information for me, and that was great. To, when when we come out of feeling something great like that, I see Jimmy on the other side is very happy. It, it really makes me happy. Um, then last week, Rock and Robin. Well, it was back to back weeks where I got shivers at one point, like goosebumps, and that means that my I'm still alive because the, my love for wrestling is still there. When that happens, it doesn't happen often, but it happened with Kanye, and it happened with Robin. When Robin started talking about Sherry, and, oh, it's happening again. That must have had a lasting effect. Uh, that was a great interview. She's a wonderful person. I love that note that she wrote to Sal that Sal forwarded to you, and now everybody can see it out there on our page. Um, just great, followed by great. Do you, do you remember that? Really... Maybe you could share with everybody who didn't see it what she wrote to Sal. Do you know? Or should I find? Uh, it? I can't. I can't quote it offhand, and I'm using the phone. All right, to so, shoot, so I'm going to find it. It'll take me one minute here. I do apologize. That'll be a little. That'll be a little um, difficult. But again, but that this moment was this fantastic. isn't the first time, and I'm not trying to brag. All right, it's you know it means a lot to us that we get the respect from the people that we're interviewing, and you know everybody knows that we ask some pretty tough questions. We're not trying to embarrass anybody, but they're real life questions. We want to know what they think, and I thought. Uh, I don't think Robin and Greg handled them like champs, right? They answered it to yeah. the, what they felt. But she wrote, Sal, yeah. please tell Monty and Jimmy that I believe this was my favorite interview ever. Super guys, thank you for hooking things up. If that doesn't say it all, Jimmy, if this ends tomorrow, you think about it, right? You think about what we've accomplished with the family behind us because without them honestly we're not doing this so they're the ones that are the spark for us um we've heard that before but i don't know what it, about this message and the type of woman she is and what she meant to me personally i was highly impressed and 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 very satisfied so um with that being said we finished tonight with who I feel is an unbelievable, terrific person, um, Hollywood from Glow. Thoughts on that? Just, just a great girl, a great guest, great interview. There's so much more, too. I'm looking forward to when her book comes out so we can ask her some more questions about her career. There's a, a bunch of things I still have in my mind that I'd like to ask her. So that'll be great when she comes back. Um, I'm just reading Phil's comment. That's the ultimate. Greg Gagne gets it. Uh, that was Phil. Yeah, well, Greg and Greg and Robin back to back weeks, uh, and Phil will understand this. They pulled the John Cena senior. 
They get us. They get us and they have no problem with how we do things. And they were very relaxed, all of them. They're very classy. You know, the questions we ask sometimes are necessary because we want to know more than the headlocks and arm bars. And I don't think that we are anywhere near Jerry Springer when we ask these questions. So I, I we just live in a very sensitive time, Mike. You know, so well, when here's we ask- a, Here's the thing, dude. It's like I grew up, you grew up, everybody watching this show grew up idolizing many of these people, whether it be a man or a woman, right? Sure. And we all understand the career they have, and there's some really funny stories that go on. But more than ever, these are real-life times, and these are real-life peoples, and these are real-life issues, okay? Yes. We've already heard a million of the stories, right? These are real life issues. There's murder going on. There's rape going on. Or, or there's accusations of this stuff, and these are right. real life issues that some of these people live through personally. Okay, and some of them have personally done some wrong things too. In our opinion, that we need to right. challenge them on. Well, well, to 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 add to that, you know, oddly enough, when she mentioned that she was uh, at. Uh, Dio's house, she mentioned that the manager of the band that she was going there with was managed by Wendy Dio. Yeah. And the first and the first thing I thought to myself was, is, yeah, Wendy Dio, who screwed Vivian Campbell out of all of his money and all of his royalty rights. The reason why Holy Diver, the last in line, are so great is not just because of Ronnie. It's because of Vivian. If you listen back to the guitar work that Vivian Campbell did on Last in Line and Holy Diver, he is the equivalent to Blizzard of Oz. Who's Blizzard of Oz? The band that recorded the album Blizzard of Oz and then found out from Sharon it was going to be called Ozzy Osbourne, getting all their rights and royalties removed. So, Jimmy, Jimmy, fantastic commentary. Uh, I recommend if anybody's interested in what Jimmy's talking about, watch the Ronnie James Dio documentary, which I believe is on Showtime still, if you have Showtime on demand, or Paramount, I think it's on. Um, Dio explains that, look, when he was just the talent, he got screwed. He was no longer the talent. He was the owner. So he was going right. to get his. And he doesn't, he doesn't sugarcoat it, right? He doesn't right. say that he didn't screw Vivian Campbell over. He said he was the talent. He got paid for what he did. I'm the one who ripped the benefits of the success of it. How you look at it is how you look at it. It's business, right? And right. Jimmy and I have been on both sides of that fence in our personal life and in this show life. In fact, we're going through something right now where we're kind of getting jacked over and we're trying to fight it, right? So, Right, um, right. But – Again, you know, we believe in it, and uh, great commentary again. Um, I want to thank again Hollywood for coming on uh, again for taking time out of her busy schedule. I want to thank everybody who watches the show every Thursday. Your loyalty is humbling. I want to thank all the members of the Monty and the Family channel from Dan and Benny, ESO, and the great Phil. Um Am I forgetting something, Jimmy? Who am I forgetting? Nobody else, right? How about the first lady? Did you throw in Maria? Well, she's part, obviously part of the family. I'm talking about active participants within the channel doing shows, right? Oh, Dan and Betty, Brucey, Philly. That's it. You right? and me, right? That's all. Yeah. Um, I want to remind what a cast. anybody. What a cast! Fr- Friday on. Player unplugged. <laughs> uh, they'll be talking baseball. It's the player. It's Jimmy Farrow. And if you're a wrestling fan, it is Rip Rogers is joining that show. Um, I want to send prayers out to, uh, oh, part of the Monty and the Family channel, Miss Missy Beefcake. Missy um, is not feeling well, and uh, she was unable to do her show tonight. Uh, my... My uh, prayers are out there, and I'm hoping everything's okay. I will give an update when I hear more news. R.J. Hudson says, what a cast. Um, what a cast. What a cast. Um, <laughs> R.J. I just can't. I can't. I just what a chat. I can't. What a chat. What a RJ, chat. What a chat. What a chat. Anyway. There you go. I wanna... Wait, Mike, Mike, one go, last thing. Go ahead. Oh, 
What? What? It's the cereal, you ding dong. What, what did you say? I'm hungry. <laughs> I can't. My favorite part of the commercial. I'm hungry. <laughs> love that part. You're so silly. It's great. You're silly. I'm hungry. Well, son. <laughs> I, I, I love it. I love how you go into Robert Goulet. Well, son. With each heaping spoonful. Not just a spoonful. A heaping. Unbelievable. And in every box is a knife to backstab. <laughs> well, you know, I it's got to come fully equipped. I can't. I just can't. Could you imagine not having the toy surprise inside? You put the toy surprise inside. Very can't. good. I can't. Yeah. Could you imagine waking up every morning and have to look at yourself in the mirror? I this just... is not my beautiful teeth. This is not my beautiful tan. This is not my beautiful life. Ah. Oh, my God. What a day. Oh, just... my God. As Bugs Bunny would say, what a maroon. Oh. Hey. All right, guys, I want to thank you. Please join us next week. Hopefully we've got a lineup on Tuesday, the Dan and Benny show. I think there's true crime on Monday. Benny probably sleeping right now. No, he's there. <laughs> um, Benny, Benny, if it's Monday, I apologize. I think it's Monday. And then um, we've got... <laughs> Missy Beefcake, hopefully, with Missy Hyatt's last interview. Then we got This Week of Pro Wrestling. And then finishing up with the great Wendy Richter. And I think Player Unplugged next Wednesday. Player Unplugged is this Friday, which I'm very excited for, dude. I got to tell you, you guys talking baseball with Rip Rogers is going to be off the hook. Yeah, uh, Benny tells me Rip is a baseball enthusiast to the max, so this should be good, man. This All right, can good. you send us out, but can you send us out in talking head style, please? Because I need to laugh. You've been watching Monty and the Pharaoh. This has been your beautiful show with your beautiful life. And until next week, later. <laughs>